JSE Cephex style options, a great choice. Welcome back to Wealth and Wisdom. With me tonight is Stephen Brown of Fairtree Capital. He's a hedge fund manager. We're talking about different sectors of the equity market and their relative attractiveness. So, Stephen, we're talking about gold. These guys are having issues. What about the retail sector? I mean, that's been the, the outperforming sector of, of the market at the moment. I mean, what's, what, 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 what are your thoughts on that at the moment? Yeah, once again, it comes down to the interest rate cycle, which is, which is very low at the moment. Um, debt servicing costs are, are, are low. And the reality is, is, that, is that the revenue stream of these businesses has been uh, growing pretty strongly. And these are very well managed businesses uh, which have managed to keep their costs under control. They've had operating leverage and the earnings of these businesses have been continually compounding um, the, the quality ones at north of 20%. So although these companies you know, um, have looked... So they're going revenues continuously at north of 20%, some of these guys? Net income north wow. of 20%. Okay, the top line's growing. Um, just north of double digits. Okay. All right. So, so the reality is, 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 is uh, you know, these companies actually genuinely through the cycle should be premium businesses, right? They're trading a little bit above that, but we have spoken previously about the distortions of rates being low, pushing people into these um, more stable earnings, earnings uh, types of businesses. So when you're in a low economic growth environment, a strong earnings growth as a, as, as a strategy uh, often tends to outperform. Now. You know, in terms of the retailers, w what is very positive about these businesses is that they generate very strong cash flows yep. and they pay a good dividend stream. So it's once again, it's a defensive play, good dividends, strong cash flows underpinning it. Businesses return of capital rather than return on capital, nice dividends and it keeps going. It's also a little bit of a hedge because they, they so far seem to have been able to pass on most of the inflationary issues in, in the economy they can pass it on. The idea is a share then, if, if we do have inflation, it's going to protect you as well. So do you think they overreached a little bit? They're a bit overstretched, some of them? Yeah, I think, I th look, I think their the, the ratings are, are pretty high, but I don't think the ratings are going to come down dramatically until we start to see a change in the macro environment, okay. until we start to see interest rates starting to rise domestically, until investors can move their money into other competing asset classes, until we can start moving into what is currently the deep value where some people are trapped right now. You're going to okay. need that rotation to happen before, before your defensive companies you know, come under pressure, before your growth strategies come under pressure, uh, under pressure, before your yield strategies come under pressure. Until then, it's going to continue. So they'll ho they're likely to hold their ratings. If the earnings growth continues to come through, then the share prices keep on rising and keep on surprising everybody to the upside. So Steve, what do you think of offshore investing for a local uh, retail guy if he wants to take some money offshore? I mean, what should he look for in, in a manager, in a, in a firm where he's thinking to have helped him invest offshore. I mean, surely there must be some companies in Europe at the moment that are incredibly downtrodden and there could be deep value there in the years to come. Yeah, I think um, if I were to take my money offshore, I, I would probably apply the same principles as what I would uh, apply locally. You know, you need to um, find a fund manager that's going to manage your assets for you. Um, you want to look for, for a, a business or a team that has got a solid track record that has been able to outperform the index over time, steadily over time, um, and have a look at the volatility of those returns. And then one needs to make sure that the team or the person that was in place that was managing those assets is still in place, um, that your investment philosophy and process hasn't changed, and and hopefully they haven't become too big as a fund management task, because if you the, become- The risks of becoming too big is that, I mean, you, you start to become the market, because you, there's only so much you can invest in, you start to become the market that you're having to invest in line with, with the market caps and the, the bigger shares are going to be your biggest holdings at, at any given time. Yeah, that's 100% that's right. I mean, we, you know, we're starting to see it now in South Africa as well. The, the, the uh, very successful houses have, have attracted a lot of capital and they're starting to become incredibly, incredibly big right now. Um, their returns will, will move towards the median. We're starting to see it play out in the general equity space. Um, and we've had quite a few new boutique managers come through and you know, in, in, my, in my mind, um, it's likely that the boutique managers are going to continue to outperform the large managers purely because of size. Okay, so they're just that little bit more nimble by being smaller. Yeah, as, look, being small doesn't uh, automatically guarantee that you're going to outperform. Okay, you, you still have to call right. Yeah. You still have to call the market right. But if you've got, 
if you've got an investment philosophy, an investment process, a team that's equally as good as the big houses, you've got a massive strategic advantage, which is that you can move your portfolio. Okay? We are dealing in incredibly uh, uncertain times at the moment where one needs to be able to shift your portfolio around. Okay. And so, so managers that, that have got solid process, solid people, solid philosophy, um, with a small balance sheet are in a much better position strategically to outperform the large managers. And I mean, what do you think of this criticism we've often heard from, from various guys about uh, risk management and the habit of viewing volatility as a proxy for risk? I mean, Warren Buffett is quite scathing about that. He says it doesn't matter how much it moves up and down. The only real risk is the permanent loss of capital. But you know, then we're looking at uh, sort of your sharp returns, your risk adjusted returns, very much using volatility as a, as a proxy for risk. What do you think of that notion? Look, I think each investor needs to decide what their return profile is that they require and therefore the amount of volatility that they're willing to actually take on. So if you feel that you need growth in your portfolio, then the likelihood is you're going to be have to take on a little bit more volatility and go into a, a, a normal equity type of product. If you feel that you're looking for capital preservation, then you need to start moving yourself right down the curve. And the okay. difference between an all-share all index fund, for example, will have a volatility of around about 13-14% on average, somewhere around there, and a market neutral fund in the hedge fund space will have a volatility of below 5%. Below five okay. percent, potentially. Okay. Yeah, you know, and that's the spectrum that you're gonna you're gonna end up dealing and with. Still get a positive return with volatility beneath five percent. I mean, that's the really ultra conservative way of investing, and and it is a, a definite option for the, especially the older guys out there in the marketplace don't want to take those huge risks. You know, be a bit more defensive. Well, it's certainly a product. I mean, it's a product. Um, you know, I would certainly also look at multi-strat products. I think I think they they are going to going to grow in the industry as well. Um, and diversity. You know, diversity is incredibly important. But capital preservation is what hedge funds are about. Uh, that's that's where we start. That's that's how we think every day. We walk into into the office. Is that we've got to is we've got to um, protect clients' capital and then try and grow it thereafter. Okay. Thanks so much for being with us, Stephen. It's fantastic to have you on the show. Thanks very much for watching Wealth and Wisdom. Hopefully you've learned a little bit about hedge funds and their obsession with preserving your capital as an investor. Hope you enjoyed the show. Wealth and Wisdom was brought to you by the Johannesburg Stock Exchange.